No one is thrilled to have surgery, no question about that. However, the, probably the most important part is that, number one, they understand that they have options. Most rotator cuffs are uncomplicated, they're smaller tears, and we're able to put them back to the bone without much of an issue. However, there are certain situations where the tissue may need a little bit of help. We know that the studies show us that over 65, the heal rates, if you will, of the rotator cuff do start to decrease. When you're 18, the tissue's great. It's as good as it's ever gonna be. And as you mature, the tissue quality, like many other things in our body, starts to diminish just a touch. The third thing really is anytime we have you know, a patient that has come in and they have failed a previous rotator cuff surgery. The previous orthopedic group that handled this, the first two surgeries had pretty much scarred and damaged the tissue significantly. And subsequently, we decided to go with the jacket. You fix the rotator cuff like you would typically, and then at the end of that part of the procedure, you add an additional part of the procedure on which you put a patch over the top of your repair. Rotator cuff surgery is all done arthroscopically, including the allograft augmentation component. So what we'll do is we'll craft a patch uh, on the back table, and what the patch is made of is cadaveric skin. So it's, it's thick enough where it's really giving you a good bulk to the tendon, and we'll measure it and we'll size the patch, and then we put that patch in right over the rotator cuff repair, and we sew that in, and we do that all through the scope. And what that does is it increases the structural integrity by about 35% and it really offloads the repair and allows the repair the best opportunity to heal. And really what we've noticed clinically is patients, interestingly, have motion quite quickly, passively, as well as a significantly decreased amount of pain compared to oftentimes their first rotator cuff procedure. Rehabilitation for a rotator cuff repair with a dermal allograft patch is just slightly different than a traditional rotator cuff. We don't actually start isometric strengthening until the eight week marker. We'll typically test their active range of motion between 10 to 12 weeks. Once we hit 12 weeks, then we begin the isotonic strengthening with the bands and dumbbells. Post-op, I was really surprised at the pain level. It was significant lower than the previous two surgeries. The first one, the pain was awful. This one, I actually went home and was able to, instead of go to sleep in a recliner, I was able to go to sleep in my bed. Not only did I get a lot of mobility out of the arm, but uh, right now I have more strength in that arm than I anticipated. We've been able to adopt a skill set which is unique in the fact that we do all of the thermal allograft augmentation procedures through the scope, which decreases pain and allows patients to achieve a quicker recovery.